Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to project number nine of 25 beginner JavaScript projects. In this application, we're gonna show you how to create this cool grocery list. I created a website dedicated to the projects that we're gonna be building in this series. You can find it at jsprospect.com. I also talk a little bit about the technologies that you need to become a web developer. And you can even access the tutorials directly from here. So if you wanted to watch this one, just click it and you can watch the tutorial here. If you wanna learn more about these projects, you can click here. And I wrote a small article that talks about each project. You could even test the project out before you build it. So let's say that you wanted to test this one out. You can click here and you can test out the project. If you wanna learn how to host your applications the way I did here, I wrote an article that shows you how to do it. So just click on this link and it's gonna take you to this article, host your website for free with GitHub Pages. And here I show you the steps that you need to take to host your application on GitHub Pages. There's only four steps, so it's actually very simple to do. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Let's create a folder. Let's call this one groceries and let's open up our visual studio. Let's open that folder. Now let's create our three files index.html style.css and script.js. Let's begin with our HTML. Shift one, enter. Let's link the CSS and JavaScript file to the HTML file. And we are gonna use Font Awesome for this project. So let's go grab the Font Awesome CDN. You're gonna click on the link by cdnjs.com. Let's copy this first URL. This is the latest version of Font Awesome. And we're gonna paste it up here. All right, and before we proceed, I'm gonna resize the window so you can see the changes that we make in real time. Let's right click and open with live server. All right, let's get started here inside the body. We're gonna create a container. We know that we need a pair of div tags for that. So let's give this a class of container. And within this container, we're gonna create another one. So let's create another pair of div tags. We're gonna give this one a class name of groceries. And within this container is where all of the items that we're gonna to add to the grocery list are gonna go. We're gonna start by creating a title. So let's use an H1 element for that. Let's add a title of grocery list. And let's place this title in the center using text align center. And right below this, we're gonna create another pair of div tags. And in here, we're gonna add an icon and an input box. So let's search for an icon. Let's go to Font Awesome. Let's click on this icons link. And we're gonna search for a pencil. Go ahead and choose whatever icon you want. I'm gonna go with this pencil here. I'm gonna copy the HTML for that. And I'm gonna paste it here. And right next to it, we're gonna create an input box. Let's give it an ID. Let's call it user input. And we're also gonna give this div element some styling. Let's use text align center. And let's also create a space between the title and the input box. So let's go back up here, create a BR element. 
and let's create another one underneath the input box. All right, let's create another pair of div tags. This is where our grocery list items are gonna go. We're gonna leave this empty for now, but we are gonna add an ID so we can access this through JavaScript later in the project. And one thing that I forgot to do is add an ID to the pencil because we wanna be able to delete all of the items from the list when you click on the pencil, so we need to get access to it. So let's add an ID of pencil. <clears throat> let's get rid of any empty spaces we have between our div elements, so our HTML markup is nice and neat, and that's gonna be it for our HTML. All right, let's get started with our CSS. We're gonna start by removing any padding and margin from our elements. To access our elements, we're gonna use the asterisk, and we're gonna set padding to zero, and margin to zero. All right, let's change the font family. But for this project, the font that I wanna use is not open source, so we won't be able to use the Google Font API. If you wanna use this font, you're gonna to have to install it in your computer. It's called Mumbler's Demo Font. Let's go ahead and search for that. And I'm sure you can download it for free from any of these websites. I'm gonna go ahead and go with this blockfonts.com one. Click download. And once you download it, it's gonna come in a zip file. Go ahead and extract the files from it. This is gonna be one of the files that's gonna come in it. To install it in Windows 10, just go down here, type font settings, and drag and drop the file in here. I already have it installed, so I'm not gonna install it, but it's as easy as that. If you have another operating system, I'm sure the process is not too different, so just figure out how to do it. It shouldn't be too difficult. So once you have it installed, you can just simply type the name of it in here, and your font is gonna change as you can see. All right, let's change the background color. I'm going to go with orange. You can go with another color if you want. For the container, we're going to create a border just to help you see the changes that we are making. Let's change the width to 90%. And let's place this container in the center with margin auto and let's turn it into a flex box. For the groceries container, we're also gonna create a border to help you see what we are doing here. Let's change the width to 600 pixels and we're gonna give it a minimum height of 100 vh that's going to turn the container into the size of the window but it's a min height that means that as our grocery list grows the container is also going to grow in size let's give it a margin of auto and let's change the background color to white and let's also give it a box shadow i'm going to go with 10 pixels 10 pixels 24 and 0. I want it to be black. Let's hover this and we're going to give it an RGBA value of 0 0.5. All right, we can go ahead and remove this border now. For the title, let's change the font size. Let's go with 2.5 rem. And let's also bring it down a little bit from the top so it's not so close to the edge. I'm going to go with 1m. Let's also change the font size of the icon. Let's go with 2 rem. And Let's change the color of it. I'm gonna go with orange. All 
Notice that the info box doesn't have this font. So we want it to have that font. So let's change the font family and we're going to use inherit. Let's remove the outline from the input box. So we're going to set that to zero. And we're also going to remove the border. But we are going to add a border bottom. Three pixels thick, solid, and black. Let's give it a width of 70%. And let's also change the font size to 1.5 RAM. And we're going to give some features to the H2 element of the all items container. We haven't created this yet. We're going to do so with JavaScript, but we want to give it some features here. Let's go with a margin left of 50 pixels. So it's not so close to the edge over here. And we're also going to use margin right. So it's not so close to the edge over here either just in case the user writes a long grocery list item. And we want to create a space between all of the grocery list items. So let's add a margin top of 15 pixels. Let's also change the font size to 2 rem. And I noticed that the margin didn't work here. So let me go back up here and see what I did. Notice that here I should include it as S. So, all right, there we go. That looks better. <laughs> All right, so this is what we're going to go with. Let's just make sure it looks good on a phone as well. So let's search for responsive design testing. Let's click on this and control V. And I think it looks good at 480. And if it looks good at 480, it usually looks good when it's bigger as well. So that looks good. We're just going to change the font size of the title. We're going to make this smaller. We're going to change the font size of this and, of course, of the grocery list items as well. So let's take care of that. Let's add a media query. This is going to be activated at 480 pixels. So let's change the font size of the title. Currently, we have 2.5 rem. We're going to go with two RAM. So we're just going to bring it down by 0.5. Let's copy this four times. This is going to be our icon. Currently, we're at two RAM for that. We're going to bring it down by 0.5 as well. And for the input box, we're at 1.5 RAM. So we're going to bring it down to one. And for the H2, that's holding all of the grocery list items. Let's change this to all items. That one currently is at two rem, so we're gonna change this to 1.5. And let's also use margin left with this one because as the screen size gets smaller, it's not gonna be necessary to use a margin left of 50, which is what we currently have. So let's split it in half to 25 pixels. All right, let's see what that looks like. And it looks a lot better now. All right, that's what we're gonna go with. Just make sure to get rid of this border here. All right, let's knock out the JavaScript. We're gonna start by getting access to the elements that we created in our HTML file. Let's start with the groceries container. We're going to get access to that by using get elements by class name. And this is the only element that we created that we called groceries. So we're going to include a zero there. Now let's get access to the pencil icon. We gave that an ID name of pencil. Now let's get access to all of the items. Currently, we don't have any, of course. We gave that container an ID of all items. 
And last but not least, we want to get access to the input box here. That way when a user enters an item, we'll be able to grab that item. And we gave that input box an ID of user input. All right, we're going to add an event listener to this pencil here. So if the user wants to delete the list, they can just click on this button. So let's use add event listener. This is going to be activated on a click. And to delete the items, let's just get access to them through our all items variable. And we're going to set the inner HTML to an empty string. All right, that's going to delete all the items from the list. Now let's add an event listener to the input box so the user can click on the enter key to enter a new item on the list. This is going to be activated on key down. Let's type in function. But for this one, we also have to include event. And let's create an if statement. That's going to check to see what key the user clicked on. If they clicked on the enter key, then we want to call in a function. Let's call it add item. And let's create that function now. All right, let's create an H2 element and put it inside of our all items list. So we're going to create a variable called h2. Let's create the element by using create element. We want it to be an h2. So let's type that in there. And we're going to set the inner HTML of this h2 element equal to the user input. Of course, we have access to that through the user input variable. And don't forget to use dot value. Otherwise, nothing is going to show up. That's annoying. Sometimes that node value pops up there and you have to change it back to value. Make sure that doesn't happen to you. Otherwise, you're going to be wondering why your program doesn't work. All right, now we're going to add an event listener to each of the grocery list items. So when you click on them, there's a line that gets drawn through them. So let's use add event listener. This is going to be activated on the click of a button or the click of the mouse, I should say. This is very simple. We're just going to change the style of the H2 by using text decoration. We're going to set that equal to line through. So now when you click on one of the grocery list items, there's going to be a line that gets drawn through them. And finally, we need to add this H2 element to our all items container. We have access to that through our all items variable. And to actually insert it, we're going to use insert adjacent element before end because we want to insert the grocery list item at the end of the list always. And let's add the name of the variable, h2. And before we wrap this function up, we want to make sure that when we enter a grocery list item here, it's going to show up on the bottom, but we want to delete this text here. So let's set the user input value equal to an empty string. All right, let's test this out. All right, that's working. Now let's click this and it deletes the list. And that's going to be it for this project. I'll see you guys in the next one.